Admitting when you're wrong is important. It shows you're open to learning and not a dick. At the end of the day, we're only human, so it's common practice for me to hold up my hands and say, yep, I done gone fucked up. But only when I'm actually wrong. Yeah, not because I've hurt someone's fifis. In the same train of thought, Mike delivers a rare treat to us by making a video on when they were last incorrect. When I say they, I of course mean a bunch of talking heads because Mike are never wrong, are they? Let's have a look. When is the last time I remember being wrong? I don't, I don't remember. It was whenever you decided to buy that fucking shirt. It's not because I'm always right. I'm, all, I'm wrong so often is the problem. So it should be fucking easy to remember then, shouldn't it? They're not asking for a monthly average or anything. There's no maths involved. Just remember the last time you were incorrect about something. Should be simple for anyone who isn't a total bellend. <laughs> Uh, April 25th, I said suicide in the UK is illegal. Attempted suicide, obviously. We can't have all those dead people taking up room in our prisons, can we? But yeah, it hasn't been since 1961. It's weird, actually. Before that, the real crime wasn't committing suicide, but actually fucking it up. I guess we just like things done properly in the UK. Anyway, that's when I was last wrong. It's not that I'm always right or anything. I just haven't spoken to anybody since then. The last time I was wrong about something... Hold on, my man, because this is an uncommon occurrence. Someone who actually looks like a pedophile. I'm not saying he is, calm your tits, but would you let him look after your kids? I doubt it. I don't know that I've, uh, I don't, I, jeez. Oh, he might look like a pedophile, but it's okay, because he can't fucking talk. At least he has that going for him. Not an amazing trait when you have a mob of angry neighbors banging down your front door over something that I'm sure was a simple misunderstanding, but at that point, words aren't likely to save you anyway. Oh shit. Um... I think you were last wrong when you looked at that box of donuts and said just one more. That's so awesome. Uh... Because like, your brain doesn't like allow you to be wrong, right? Oh, yeah, Mike, do this thing where they overlap the sound with the next shot. Kind of like when Milo Stewart stops talking on the screen to brush her hair, but you can still hear a whiny voice. They call it attention allocation. I call it fucking annoying. I remember... Well, I remember being wrong about the election. <laughs> All right, they said election, but no one has mentioned the president's name yet, so we're still good. Is he on about predicting the results, though? Because I don't think that counts. That's not what this video's about, is it? Ah, who fucking knows with Mike? I think it was over the weekend with um, my two best friends from college, and I was adamant that they had told me something that they didn't. See, now that is being wrong about something. You had a mix-up. You got confuddled. You were incorrect. All part of being human. And well done you for being the first one to actually admit to it. Not like the rest of these babbling wankers. Oh, oh, I just can't remember. I mean, I'm wrong about things all the time, but I just can't remember. Dickheads. I accidentally misgendered somebody. For fuck's sake, Mama Duke, do you even have hair beneath that hat? Is it holding your cranium together? Take it off. You're indoors. Don't be Rude. I was just like full flames in my head mode. Like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, apologizing. And I finally knew how it felt to be like a white person. What? How did you? For fuck's sake, what was that? 10 seconds? He went 10 seconds without likening something to skin color. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure that's some kind of personal record for him. Keep it up, Marmaduke. You might make it a 12 soon. But fucking heck, we were having a nice video until that happened. He ruins everything. When they accidentally say some shit about black people. Oh, come on. You must, you must already know how it feels to be a black person when they say some shit about white people. So what's the fucking difference? Unless you are genuinely that self unaware. Do you know, I'm getting to the point that every time I see his moronic ass talking about race, I want to say some really, really off key shit, you know? Just give a little bit back to him. The other side of the same coin. But I'm sure someone out there would perceive reducing a black man to tears as a hate crime. So I'll keep it it reined in for now and learn what the fucking visor on your hat is actually for you knobhead you could argue that you know reality is subjective your fucking intellect is subjective are they taking the piss with this guy did he come from a casting agency specializing in people who talk out of their ass and where can i sign up to that shit 
and uh, that my answer here is stalling. Why are you even here, dude? To make Marmaduke look good in comparison? Because it's gonna take a lot more than just one of you to do that. The person who was hosting this at their home, and it was a beautiful home, and they're super sweet and like incredibly inviting. As inviting as your beard must be to nesting birds. When did the hobo look come into fashion? Any hint of masculinity it brings has quickly been offset by appearing in a video by Mike. Might as well shave it off now, mate, before it falls off. But they had this dog that was just like all over me. It would jump on me. I would try to get the dog like not to be on me. And I was scolded mightily. If you say you were wrong because you kept pushing the dog away from you, I'm gonna kick off. From both my fiance and her roommate because it was incredibly disrespectful for me not to just kind of swallow that. Swallow what? The dog's tongue as it's trying to lick you? How the fuck is that disrespectful of you to not sit there and take it? If I'm in someone's house, and their dog is all over me, not generally a problem because I fucking love dogs, but the owner will always apologize to me and berate the hound for coming across so desperate, not have a go at me for having such a damn lickable face. Your fiance is a fuck up, mate. Don't marry her. She'd let your kids do what the fuck they want. There was a time when, journalistically speaking, I made a big error in the lapse of judgment. The question was, when were you last wrong, biggin? No one asked for a trip down memory fucking lane, and this must be way back in the day if you're on about when you were a journalist. Blatant past tense, seeing as you work for Mike now. I get this email from this woman who said that she was Native American and she was verbally attacked outside of a Starbucks. I screenshotted that email, posted on Twitter and said, hey, a reader of mine sent me this. Just published it without checking it out first, eh? I can see why Mike offered you a job. Several days later, I received an email from this right-wing news publication. Apparently, the woman that emailed me was actually a right-wing troll who has his own YouTube channel. Yeah, see, normally that would be fair enough. You got trolled and that happens to the best of us. But when your story starts off about a woman and it turns out it was a man, fuck, you didn't check a damn thing on that source, did you? Fucking brilliant journalism, that. This right-wing publication that brought that fact to light for you is obviously doing a better job. That's a big difference between the left and the right. One takes journalism way more seriously than the other. Here what I did wrong was I never really reached out to her. Uh, him. Actually, you just said it was a him. When were you last wrong? Right fucking then. To verify if it's true. You dickhead. How shit a journalist were you? Of course they'll say it's true. They're a fucking troll. Fact checking isn't asking the source if they're telling porky pies. Sorry. I didn't mean to mention pork pies in front of you. Moving on. There's a certain like trick you do with yourself every time you're like busted being wrong. Admitting you were incorrect and moving on, enlightened by the knowledge that you now know you were wrong? It's not a trick, dude. It's called learning. Unless it's in an argument with your significant other, in which case you just change the subject to something they did three years ago and never let it go. Where it's all part of your learning process? Like, it, you're never explicitly wrong. What the fuck is this guy on about? Of course you're explicitly wrong. Attributing it to a learning curve doesn't make you right. How have they got fully grown adults talking about something a fucking four-year-old already knows. You are underdeveloped on your way to being right at any given time is kind of like the um, beautiful story I tell myself. Underdeveloped in being right. I have never heard such bullshit. Fuck off, mate. Go on. You're late for your chemotherapy session. I mean, I guess, you know, we... We curate our memories in a way that, like, I don't know if we always remember being wrong. What kind of useless facility would that be? Unless it's the time you accidentally cut off your left bollock while chopping vegetables for a stir fry, wouldn't you rather remember the things you do right? Like correctly performing a triple bypass, or how to squeeze out a dangerous fart when you've got diarrhea. Doesn't that seem a little more useful than this journey of self-correction Mike seems to want everyone to embark on? If I remember it happening that way, it definitely happened that way. Yeah, most people feel that way, which is why Elizabeth Loftus did a study on eyewitness testimony and, I believe, changed the value of witness statements in a court of law on the grounds that people get basic shit wrong without realising it. Fuck your talking heads, Mike. I'm not afraid of being wrong. I embrace, like, the wrongness... The, the wrongness comprises me. You haven't come up with a single example of when you were last wrong, you twat, so don't sit there and say you embrace it when you've been avoiding it throughout this whole video. They weren't even asking for big mistakes either, like taking the wrong baby home from the hospital. You could have said anything. Buttoning your fuck ugly shirt wrong, for instance, boning someone else's husband, anything. I didn't forgive myself for being such an asshole for so long. 
I like her. She seems down to earth, which must go a long fucking way in the offices of Mike. She's gotta be a lesbian or something, hasn't she? There's no way they'd employ someone normal unless they're gay or secretly a moomin or something. <laughs> I learned my lesson, I promise. I promise I learned my lesson. I'm not gonna do it again. You, mate, are a fucking fool. You haven't learned shit. It's a sad state of affairs when a woman has a man trained better than her dog. I say next time it shits on the floor, you rub her fucking nose in it. Ah, uh, the end. We got there, and with only one segment from Marmaduke. I guess he didn't have much to say on the matter, just dropped in to say white people and then fucked off again. This video didn't really say much though, did it? Mike have been trying this new subtle approach to things, which is hella refreshing compared to their previous on-the-nose method of getting Ali Kakesh to harass people in the street, but I think they've gone so subtle that even they don't know what the hell they're on about anymore. Still, at least we get Marmaduke talking about race because he has absolutely no opinion or not knowledge on anything else and everyone likes consistency. Thanks for watching guys, check out the Patreon link in the description to support the total annihilation of my liver and remember, being right means you're correct, but being far right means you're a Nazi.